success? Kind of, kind of success. We are live streaming, but we are live streaming to my actual page. So I'm just going to share back to the place in which I work. So. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, we're late. Um, by a lot, I apologize. Um, oh, so, would you mind starting us off by telling us about yourself? Tell us who you are, your background, um, what your influences are. Basically, who are you? Pray. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's start from the beginning. Way back in 1991, on August 12th. No, no, no. I'm not gonna start here. <laughs> But um, I was uh, born, raised in Chicago in the South Side. Um, you know, middle class family. You know, we weren't we weren't poor, but we weren't rich. Um, and uh, my dad was a singer. Um, comes from a singing family, um, a musician family. He's uh, he does gospel, and he also was a DJ as well. So I guess that you can say that that's my introduction to music, so to speak. Um, when I was about 10 years old, I was at a barber shop and I heard a saxophone. And I'm like, hmm, that sounds really, really cool. Hey, dad, can I get a saxophone? He goes, sure. That didn't happen. Like, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know, that's where I guess my, my, my initial, like, yeah, I want to play a horn. I've always been into music. I grew up in the church. Um, so, um, you know, singing and all that good stuff. None of that is foreign to me. My dad oh. being... Well, what was it about the saxophone? You know, I had to, I was played French horn, so I had to sit by saxophonists and um, I always kind of resented y'all for having the best parts, if I'm honest. <laughs> Man, you know, the funny thing is we never, we, we don't consider ourselves having the best parts, but what, what got me on it was um, uh, when I was in that barbershop, it was either My Favorite Things by John Coltrane or Take Five by Dave Brubeck. I know it was one of those off time deals. And it was just like this really cool sound. And I'm just like, hey, what is that? And that's 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 really just what it was. It was a cool sound. I wondered what it was. And he said it was a saxophone. So I wanted one, you know, you know, you know how 10 year olds are. Yeah. Um, but like I said, that didn't happen. Um, so fast forward um, to high school. It was uh, around like my freshman year. I got this writing assignment from my English teacher to create a short story. But I did the assignment, of course, but I got so into it, I ended up creating basically a like small novel. And um, so what many people don't know is that my first realm of expression is actually in creative writing rather than um, music expressions. So with my writings and stuff, I started, you know, writing short stories, poetry, um, you know, even philosophies, sometimes some jokes and stuff like that, just any, any way to get out. Uh, and then fifth, then that 15, 16, I was in beginning band. And my teacher, who's a trumpet player, he liked me. He was kind of cool. So he was like, hey, you should play trumpet. And I'm like, no, I'm Ooh. playing saxophone. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, try this mouthpiece out. <sighs> okay, well, now where's the saxophone mouthpiece? You know, so yeah. I really knew I wanted to play saxophone. And um, because uh, of all that it was included in it. Um, playing music, if if you don't know, is one of the few activities that you, you have to equally use your left and right brain in order for you to do it successfully. So that's creative and mathematic at the same time. So it was like the first like real true challenge for me. Um, it replaced video games. And um, I, you know, in the beginning band, I got my friends, I found new friends, I found new ways to express myself. You know, in marching band, you're literally supposed to yell at the top of your lungs, wave your arms, jump up and down, and play as loud as you can. Uh -huh. I had never, I had never had that a, a, um, opportunity before, you know, to express myself like that. So I'm like, what? We're supposed to do this with music? Oh, yeah. And then uh, also within that first year of playing, I got in jazz band as well. And that is where it really sparked off because in jazz, when it comes to improvisation, you're, you play whatever you want to play. And to me, that was opening a can of worms. I'm like, oh, wait, you mean I don't have to play what's on the page? Which means I cannot read on purpose now? Great. Um, so uh, I, got, I got into jazz improvisation because once again, it was a way to express my voice. It was also mathematical. It's a very interesting puzzle because how can you say that there's no wrong notes, but some stuff sounds bad? 
So it's always that that back and forth that always has me going like, okay, what about this? What about that? Like I said, it replaced video games. I got um, to all um, all city things. Merritt School of Music in Chicago, uh, After School Matters, which is a wonderful set of programs for uh, artistic youths in Chicago. Um, those those two programs really helped me out. So that's where I started off with my music education, and because you know I was learning how to read music. Um, I was also writing my own, you know, just creative writing. Very quickly, I got into writing music as well. So I got into writing music the same year I got into playing music. And those, it's just always been that since then. Um, I would hit the Chicago open mic underground scenes, and then I hit the jazz jam sessions. And, you know, I was just all over the place, just trying to find new ways and new places to express myself. And I've just pretty much been doing that since. But now you also teach at UAPB, right? Would you yes. tell us a little bit about your role there? Uh, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about my journey there um, to how I got there. Um, I went to UAPB from 2009 to 2012 on a uh, marching band scholarship. Mm -hmm. And I got my degree in sound recording technology because I knew I didn't have the patience to teach other people's children inside <laughs> right um and i you know graduated in 2012 and um when it comes to music the only guaranteed paycheck with benefits is teaching and so i was like for job security i knew i wanted to play i knew i was going to play that was that was not a question i'm going to play i'm going to perform so how do i make my living and so uh, a couple of my mentors um over years said you know maybe we're going to get into education uh, luckily, by the time I got into grad school, I did have the patience for education. I had developed it over the time. Um, graduated 2013, December 2013. I was back at Vandercook College of Music for grad school in January 2014. So I did not even take a semester off. And um, yeah, that, that was a very rigorous program. I would say um, I haven't visited other music education programs, but Vandercook College of Music has the best music, edu music education program in the nation. Um, it produces very, very, very sound educators, very creative educators, and the teachers there are at the top of their craft. And they try to create, you know, many versions of them at the top of their craft. And so I took advantage of that opportunity. Um, in there, I was also under a scholarship. Uh, they let me in. I barely had to, um, you know, apply because of my my um, grades and such from you know grad, uh, undergrad. But uh, that took about two and a half years. Got my master's in music education, and I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, for I was planning on you know hitting the ground running, being all like cool saxophone dude, starving artist guy. Um, that was the plan, you know. And use my degree, or at least using my teaching skills, to you know get a little side money on the side. I was working at Enterprise Rental Car at the time. You know, I was going to hustle my way up the top. You know, that was my plan. But God had other plans. Uh, turns out the department chair at UAPB, Dr. Bates, Dr. Michael Bates, amazing man, uh, was stepping down from his position, uh, leaving Dr. Richard Bailey the opportunity to go into that position as department chair. Richard Bailey was my sound recording instructor. So now that space was vacant. I don't know how many conversations it took, but it was apparently a pretty easy decision because I was qualified with the master's degree for them to just ask me back. So I was invited back to teach the major that I got from UAPB and less in less than in less than three years. And um, I'm very grateful for the faculty and staff of, you know, voting for me and, you know, putting me in that ring and such. Um, and so that's what I've been doing since the fall of 2016 as the sound recording, music sound recording technology director um, at University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Um, there we teach all things when it comes to sound recording. Um, unfortunately, because this whole thing, like sound recording is a whole science and every little piece has its own jobs attached to it. We can't like get and create specialists, but I make sure to introduce them to all facets, excuse me, so that by the time you graduate, you can choose your own 
uh, concentration. So I have students who are into film, I have students that are into scoring, I have students that are uh, just into mixing, arranging, you know, um, it's just, it's just, it's very vast, but I, I think, uh, you know, my, my true philosophy is that if they're paying for education, they need to get the most out of it. And they're paying me for that education. So they deserve my best efforts as students. And as a former student, as former member of the M4 band, Marching Musical Machine of the Mid-South, as a former student of the UAPB music department, it was even double a personal responsibility because I literally look at them as my little brothers and sisters. Um, kind of funny, when I started out, uh, some of the freshmen were, or like the sophomores were actually some of my friends still because I'm less than three years out of the program. So I'm teaching my peers. I'm teaching the people I've marched with, <laughs> you know, um, and even some people who uh, I remember one of my first private lesson students was a guy who was my superior when I started as a freshman, but he had left to go to the military and came back. By the time he came back, I was his teacher. And um, yeah, so that's that. Wow. So um, I know UAPB has some special components to its music programs. Um, would you like to talk about the studio aspect at all? Yes, yes. So um, when I was choosing my major, I was thinking, hmm, I don't want to teach. I know I'm going to perform. So what do I do with all this music? So music production was pretty much the only other thing left. Um, I got the scholarship for marching band. So I would say, let's see what they got. Out of all the schools in Arkansas, UAPB had the only music production program with a studio on campus. And to my knowledge, still is with a working studio on campus. Um, and that was a huge benefit. It's actually a selling point uh, for the major itself, because if you want to get into sound recording with practical, uh, practical experience, the most logical explanation would be to come to UAPB, you know? Um, so that, that's been very helpful. The students, they learn on professional equipment. I teach them on professional equipment. They get to rent out the studio space and use it after hours. Um, unfortunately, since February, since the snowstorms, there has been some building damage. And so we haven't been able to get back into the studio. Um, I've had to be creative between virtual classes and finding um, in-person spaces in order to continue to teach them. But they've been very, very receptive of it. The, they've been very cooperative, and I'm I'm very thankful for um, for how they've been rolling with the punches. You know, and th sometimes they they get me out of bed. You know, it's more so more so of that. But the program itself, yes, I, I really appreciate the fact that. We do have that studio on campus. It gives the students a chance to, um, you know, really practice what they're going to be doing in the real world and start start a portfolio. Um, actually, part of my how I teach the program, every class you have a product at the end of it. So at the end of my computer music class, you will have at least two songs that you've made. By the end of the audio for video class, you'll have a video clip that you've done all the audio for. So you start your portfolio while doing the assignments and so that's how i've structured it so far and from that you're going to also move over into doing a get smart workshop for us hooray oh yes of music for the arts council jazz hands mm -hmm. yay um <laughs> so that's going to come up december 13th do you want to talk a little bit about what you're going to do yes yes so apparently i'm going to be speaking on the aspects of live music production and live event production, uh, which I, you know, personally find flattering, not only is because, you know, I'm being asked to present on it, but for the most part, my live music production um, experience was self implemented. I was not I'm the first show that I did, I called it a 3d kickback. It was for my birthday slash album release in 2017 or 18, something like that, where, you know, I was like, hmm, I want to throw a live show. I want to play the music that I want to play. And, you know, no, nobody's going to stop me. But at the same time, I'm also a sound engineer. So here's my chance to get some practice in running live sound. And so since then, I've been running, you know, doing my own shows and all that good stuff, getting a lot of experience on how to mic live sound, record, because I would set up, I would rehearse the band, uh, set up the live sound, record it, and then go back and mix it. And so some of those shows are actually available 
on my YouTube page. They call 3D kickbacks. When you know it says 3D kickback semicolon or well, actual colon, and then you know the title of that. But um, yeah, so when it comes to finding the venue, finding the musicians, rehearsing the band, picking out the music, advertising, all of these things, um, which have a lot of small details in them in order for you to be successful, uh, are things that I've been coming through for the past few years. And I've got it down pretty well now. Um, big piece I'm missing is how to make it more profitable, but at least I don't come out broke at the end <laughs> of it. That's, that's, that's where I'm at now. And um, it's a, um, recently I've, I had a conversation with somebody whose job is to get money for UAPB, Dr. George Cotton. And he, he hit me to an idea that events are for advertising. So with that, it's like, you know, when we're doing these events, you're really essentially advertising for somebody to hire you for that next gig, you know, unless you're doing it for fun. So, you know, we'll talk about that as well. You know, how to how to decide what, what, what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. But ultimately, if it's about the music, it's about entertaining the people, you're never going to lose. So you want to entertain us with oh. some sounds? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So um, I told you writing was my first deal. So I'm going to spit a poem to you. I usually talk about motivation. So this one is called intermission. Late night creeping in class with no sleep in, working all evening and then gigging on the weekends. The Leo steady growing, you can say I'm still teething. With both feet I leap in, dive into the deep end. I'm going for the goal while they blinded by the sequins. The first step in the sequence is to seek wins. I'll never take a loss if I could pass a L. Lesson, you can trust me in your circles I don't entail. Don't be fooled by the Urkel, I get turned as well. Not a contradiction, I'm just out of my shell. The wannabe rabbits can't keep up. You can't just count them in your sleep. You got to shepherd your sheep up. Speak up. Knock them out the seats. Make them leap up. I forgot how to ease up. I guess I kick my feet up when I no longer need bucks. Funny how I'm eating off my mental upchucks. Lyrical symbolism subliminal to my vision. No ill intention to mention, so please ease the tension. I'm trying to send your soul's cancer into remission. Teach at the school of hard knocks to lower retention. Shed your egos. Reveal your intermission. Remember, we're all gods just an intermission so that was intermission you know and uh i will play something for you, right. you know, on this this is june oh i have a knife that i named betty nice <laughs> <laughs> any particular reason well she's a cleaver uh, like she, uh, and I thought it, a Betty Cleaver, you know, like okay, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I named this after my grandmother, but you know, everything's got a story. My grandmother's <laughs> named Betty too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, Betty with the knives. I like it. All right, so unknife related song I'm going to play is uh, since we're heading into December. I know uh, Thanksgiving is tomorrow, but there's like no Thanksgiving songs out there. So I'm just going to play a little snippet of the Christmas song. Okay, that sounds great. Mm. 
That's so great. Um, I actually, yeah, I've been turning the stations off for Christmas music, but that would be, I would listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, gosh, so uh, are you are you playing anywhere? Are you Do you have any gigs lined up or what are you uh, doing? Yes, yes, yes. I got, um, I'm actually trying to do a lot these days. Uh, let's see here. I have a gig. I'm looking at my phone here for the for that. Um, surprisingly, so um, spoiler alert: I'm actually in Chicago right now, visiting family. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and I have a gig in Chicago this weekend. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, so that's this weekend. Um, next Tuesday. I'll be working with a nonprofit organization called Brandon House Center for Culture and Performing Arts. That's in Little Rock. I won't be playing for them, but they're doing a basically an artist opening, grand opening. There'll be a lot of music there, a lot of art there. So that's um, in Little Rock on Tuesday. Look up Brandon House Culture and Performing Arts Center. Mm. Uh, then that Friday, I have a private gig, and then on that. Saturday the 4th, I'm doing a gig at the Maumelle Event Center. Me and my band will be playing for the winter ball, for a winter ball there. So, so um, if people wanted to hire you, like where would they go? Or like if they wanted to reach out and see if you would do a music event for them, how do they contact you? Uh, you can contact me. Um, for now, you can contact me directly on my phone. Um, it's kind of dangerous because we're still on the big wide internet. So, you know, hopefully no hackers are here, but 773-547-7393. Um, they can ask you for my number. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. I can give people yeah. your number. Oh. Yeah, you actually can. Um, I'm, I'm taking all gigs at this point. Well, all gigs that I can make. Um, then uh, my email address, damontalbert34 at gmail.com. You can reach out to me on Facebook, uh, Messenger, uh, Instagram Messenger, and hey, I got a new one for you. I just got this, and now you guys are getting a sneak peek because I haven't made a public announcement yet. But I just got my website launched. Oh, good! Damon I was Talbert. looking for when. When did you get that up? Um, I got it up essentially last week, uh, but I'm still getting trained on how to maneuver through it and, and all that good stuff. So I'll make the grand big announcement. But if you want to contact me, if you want to see some of my music samples, you can go to www.damontalbert.com. Make sure you spell it without the I. My name is not Damien and it's not Damon. It's D-A-M-E-N. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know. Um, uh, and you also have a YouTube channel, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Um, Damon Tolbert is really, uh, I, I try to make it very easy for me to find, being that it's very easy to mis misspell my name, but at the same time, once you spell it right, I'm the only one out there. So I'm the only Damon Tolbert, D-A-M-E-N, that you're going to find on the internet that's doing anything musical. Trust me, I looked. And um, so, yeah, if you can just type in my first and last name, find a way to contact me, reach out to me any way you can, send a messenger pigeon, um, I don't know, just just whatever you can. Um, reach out to me. Okay. Well, is there anything I should have asked you that I haven't? Um, off the top of my head, uh, no, 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 not really. I'm just uh, excited for the workshop on the 13th. And, you know, if people are interested in, in buying my music, they can actually buy it from DamonTalbert.com. People are interested in listening to my music, they can go all up and down my YouTube page. Um, if you just want to see you know, what I want everybody to see, just follow me on Instagram. And, oh, I forgot, the workshop is free, people, so sign up for it. Uh, yeah, we don't charge, um, we pay the artists, of course, at the Arkansas Arts Council, but we don't charge the people who want to come and learn. So it's a really great opportunity for some professional development in the arts field. So a music arts field. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about it, too. Um, I can't think of anything else, though. I always ask people, you know, what's something that you wish people would know that maybe they don't know? Like, is there something? Well, uh, not necessarily about me, but I wish people would truly understand the um, power of their own choices. 
and that you choose to be who you are every day and every day you can choose to to do something else and it, most of the things the barriers that that tell you that you can't be or won't be or whatever are imaginary barriers in your mind that you tell yourself so that is what i really 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 would love people to know hmm. well i'll have to think about that a lot <laughs> <laughs> it's the thinking season for me like, yeah from Thanksgiving through New Year's, you have to like reevaluate your entire life. <laughs> <laughs> right, then get to New Year's and then you make a decision that you don't keep. <laughs> yeah, well, mm -hmm. I mean, at least I'm not gonna do the gym because I'm already doing kickboxing, so I'm ready. Oh, nice, nice, yeah. nice. That's, that's, you know, they say that the, the reason people go to the gym is to lose weight, but you lose weight with your diet. Um, you get mm -hmm. fit and you build your muscle, you tone your body with exercise, but you lose weight with your diet. I just wanted to release inner rage and anxiety. So, yes, yes, <laughs> that's what I do on the saxophone. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, yeah. Also, French horns, they don't go, they don't carry very well. So, I haven't played a French horn in a long time. It's not like a, I mean, you it's know, the season. <laughs> in grad school, I learned how to play the French horn, and I don't oh know gosh. why anybody would do that to themselves. <laughs> <laughs> how would you? <laughs> Like none of these buttons matter. Like <laughs> no, it's all yeah. It's the hand and the yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, anyway. mm -hmm. Well, it was a really, a really big pleasure, and I'm so thankful that you're coming to our workshop. And thank you for giving me this interview and this opportunity. So I really appreciate you. Oh no problem. Reason. I appreciate the, this opportunity and being the opportunity to spread not only my talents but also you know the messages that I hold in my heart. That's wonderful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I will see you soon. And thank you so much again. And take care. Okay, Bye. same to you. Peace. Wait, I got one last question. Okay. Will I be able to get a copy of this recording? Yes. Yay. Yes. You can. All right. <laughs> all right. That's all. Peace. Okay.